Today we're working on another F750. Um, this truck, uh, we need to shorten this one up too. And after the last video we did shorten up a frame, there's a lot of people that said they wanted to see some some of the things that we didn't show. So we're going to video this one. Um, this one's going to be different than the last one just a little bit. Uh, this one needs to be set so the axle is 108 from the back of the cab to the center of that axle. Uh, so basically what the guy is doing is he's putting the 12 foot flatbed on here. So if I did measurements halfway correct, we'll end up with about maybe a foot, six, between a, a six inches and a foot of frame back behind here we're gonna leave after we move this axle forward. So we're gonna show the whole process. A lot of people wanna see how we drill the frame, what we drill it with. All that kind of stuff so um, we're gonna hopefully get all that this time if the camera cooperates so uh, let's get started okay so here it is all finished up got my drive shaft a little bit of a story with my drive shaft um, the one place I used to take it uh, they had a change in people management whatever I dropped my drive shaft off and all they were gonna do was take another drive shaft we had cut it and put the slip yoke from the other one because we needed it longer and then balance it well they wanted 500 and some bucks to do this um, so I didn't I took it back from there I took it to another place that a friend of mine uses I took it to them and they they took the two drive shafts they cut it and put this slip yoke on the longer one and uh, I went to go pick it up I paid for it and uh, went and had to have it balanced and they're like we can't balance this when they put this together at the first place um, it was so far off not being straight and true they had to cut it back apart and re-weld it it was a shame a real shame but uh, they got it all done I'm still within budget um, they checked over everything it didn't need anything uh, all the joints were good the carry bearing was good which we thought it was anyways so they got it all done and uh, I got a little primer on the frame here just so you know it doesn't rust on the guy before he gets to it but also you see here they put a paint line here so that you know where it's supposed to go when you balance it and put it together because when you balance these drive shafts they have to be balanced as a complete unit the whole entire shaft as one piece that's how they balance it so it's in it works it's good it drives good um, the guy that's taking the truck has he 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 asked me for the best deal with the worst tires I had and that's what I got he has brand new tires at home and he didn't want to he wanted to save some money by not not taking our good tires so uh, we put on the economy tires he's gonna trailer the, the truck home and do what he's gonna do which is a 12 foot flatbed so uh, next we're gonna get on I don't know one of these other ones I got a few more down at the shop too uh, we're gonna shorten up another one one of these is gonna end up being my dump truck one of these days but uh, we have quite a few more to go so there it is guys there's the complete moving the axle forward hundred percent start to finish so if you like what we're doing give us that thumbs up if you haven't already hit that subscribe button leave your comments down below and we'll catch you on the next one so the first thing we'll start with is getting all the wiring taken loose from the frame and all the air lines we will take all of this loose unplug whatever we need to um, and then we'll pull you can see my wiring comes loose right here this is for the ABS and the lights and uh, yeah ABS and lights and we'll take that loose We'll pull it up forward. We'll take all the air lines loose. These are all extra cables that they run. One for the lift gate. Um, a couple of these are for backup cameras. We'll pull all this stuff out. We need to pull it up to this area. And we'll just take it and flip it out of our way. This is a pretty mild case of what we call rust jacking. What happens is the steel starts to rust between the two pieces. And it basically expands when it does it makes it even tighter on the bolt sometimes bolts will break pretty common on like double frames you see it a lot but on this one these ones 
this one here was pretty tight and then there was one up here that had some rust jacking you see what happens here you see that it starts to rust and expand in there this was what a bump stop was and this one was really hard to get off right here makes it even tighter than it originally was so about got this side down get moving on the other side all right so everything is stripped off the frame in the back now the next thing is we're gonna get the drive shaft out take it loose here we're gonna take this loose here this section of drive shaft right here will may have to get shortened we'll have to measure and see for sure um, this section here and this section here come out completely because we don't need them um, they're going to come out and not be used so these are hard to see but that's a 12 point either a 12 millimeter or 13 millimeter and these are sockets extension built in from snap-on and you see they've they're 12 point and they're meant for an impact because it's so tight to get in it's so hard to get in here with an impact so it makes it so you can get in there a little easier with your gun so that's what we're gonna do now get the drive shaft out of here and drop the carry bearing brackets we got two of them to take off all right we got the drive shaft out that section up there stays now um, in this truck's life and what what's the miles on this 260 270 something like that anywhere somewhere in there the truck had been towed so when they tow it they'll cage the brakes which is why the one brake chamber is probably open and they remove the rear drive shaft so it doesn't spin the transmission um, well whoever did it four of the uh, 12 point heads were stripped and as soon as I put my socket on it finished it off so I just cut the heads off we'll just replace that hardware I was able to get this one doesn't matter this is the drive shaft we're not using and the one that was in there I was able to get out because there was one in the differential and three in here that were stripped so this I just took a cutting wheel just cut into the try to get underneath the head of it as you can see like that once I got under so far I took an air chisel and just smacked it with a hammer and they broke so that came out okay so now next step is I have everything loose back here the whole everything back there is done now I got to remove the cross member so we can slide the axle forward so I got to take these huck bolts out these if you're not familiar this is what's called a huck bolt it's like a rivet it's kind of threaded and they use a hydraulic machine that pulls on this and pushes on this and that's what holds it um, so I gotta cut these off so there's two here two here and there's a rear cross member here we're gonna cut this out too that makes it easier if you take all these out it makes it easier to slide the whole axle forward or bring the truck back and everything slides in there easier I like to spread this out here you can take one side apart if you want and put a chisel or pry bar or something in here to spread the uh, spread the frame out so this is this is how we establish back the cab I take this magnetic speed square put it on here that gives us the exact back of the cab or I come out here I made a finger mark right about here so this is going to be our center what is our 108 CA so that's where we need to be right there okay so that tells me now I can come back to here measure from center here forward and see where this is going to land and then that'll give me an idea whether I need to take this cross member out or not which I think we do so let's get to measuring 108 center of axle this is the back of the leaf spring hanger this is the front of the leaf spring hanger you see this these are close but um, these holes are lower down than we need they need to be farther up 
so and also they're about a half an inch off so I'm not sure what we're gonna do yet but for sure we have to take these out because that cross member can't stay there so we're gonna get the cross members plasma cut out right now you want this? still tight because these brackets are squeezing it all right now we need to lift up the back of the frame we got to get the great all get it ready great all is kind of limping along right now I don't have the lifting capacity I normally do because it's got one cylinder that's blown out right now and removed so I gotta get that fixed but uh, we're gonna get it over and get it set up now.
This one up here we can't get yet, but we should go get the one on the other side. Doesn't look like it. You have to move it a little bit. Oh, that. Now we got one left. Very, very careful. Can you tap up on it or no? You can, It'll but there's a load. See how this is? Yeah. That means that this is up too high and the bolt's up like this trying to lift this, so okay. I gotta come down some. Okay. I'll go ahead and tap the other side out one here. The worst thing you can do is knock them things loose, not pay attention, and it could. We're, we're not close here. This frame could just mm. jump up, and if I'm leaning over like this, and yeah, we don't want that. Make me less pretty. See, we're good there, but we're gonna load on the frame. It wasn't bad. I'll pick it up. That one's a lot more in the way. Do what? We're going to lift up the frame and pull the truck back. And it's accurate. Yep. I mean, you measured the pipe, so it's, you know what I mean? It's the same as using a tape measure, but this is more steady, you know? It, it's consistent. Yeah, like, I don't even know why someone would think that wouldn't. It's because they probably don't do this, never done it. Probably. This is a sucker, man. It stinks. I need to, uh, push down on that. Can you get a pry bar and push down that back piece from here? Yeah, I gotta get the pry bar. Okay. Alright, so what we end up doing is this is like 185 and something to the center of the axle originally. We need to be 108. So you take uh, take 185 and 3 quarters or whatever it was, minus 108 gave us like 78, 79 somewhere in there. So what I do is smash that bolt, that conduit, like I said before, put a bolt in it, measure from the center there to the center here, drill a hole, put my pencil in here. That is the distance that we're shortening up. That is how far forward we're moving it. Don't make the mistake of thinking that, you know, you're gonna measure from here back and make it 108 if that's where you want to go. You gotta find the difference. And then I just go from one to the next to the next and it works real well. Alright, let me get this last one marked. Okay, so in order for him to know exactly where to drill, he takes a tape measure and then just puts uh, tape over it 
and he knows what all this means, but, uh, like, B is for bump stop, R is for rear, rear. F is for front, F is for front, ABS. yeah, I mean, I, I don't know if you guys can air see valve. that, but, yeah, ABS, air valve, all that, he has it all marked on here, and then, um, and then he just takes this, can you help me here? takes it on the top of the frame and wraps it down and then he'll just mark and then he takes a center punch hits it there so he can see exactly where and I mark what it is so I know what size hole I'm drilling like these are 5 16 holes these are 11 16 holes these are 5 16 holes 11 16 so I'll do all my 11 16 first and then go back This is what I use to drill the holes in the frame with. This is a uh, Milwaukee uh, battery powered mag drill. It's a magnetic based drill. You turn the magnet on and off right here. It comes with two chargers. You can use it with annular cutters with the notches on them, which resemble this right here. Or you can put this adapter in and run regular twist drill. Bit. So that's what we're going to use. So let's uh, get at it. Cuts good, huh? Mm hmm. I think I'm going to grab a. Sure is messy with all yeah, the I'm oil, grab but. A towel. Okay. Just got one right here. I don't like getting this thing filthy. Well, we'll just have to clean it up when we're done. Yeah. Okay, now we'll go to the next one. So what I like to do is bring the point up close so it's easier to line it up. Turn the magnet off. Move it up. How close we are. It looks like it's right on. Okay. Hmm? Yeah. The annular bits throw more oil around than the other yeah, ones. Yeah, you, know? you can use a little bit less. Okay. Oil. I'm just trying to keep it cool. And look at all them chips. Look the way it comes out. Mm -hmm. it does a beautiful job. Problem is the truck has slop in it. Hmm. So when I'm lifting it, Heat is the killer. There's so much stuff around it. I think. Well, we can stop it in between. That's get the right. stuff off, but it does a nice job. Look at that. This is what we're drilling out. 
That's what's left when it pops through the other side. Huh. So it's like a big hole saw, or a little hole saw, I guess. Yeah. Okay, there's three done. Huh. Ton more this to time, go. huh? Yeah. A ton more to go. Well, that's what it is. Center punch. Let's go down a little bit. We're good. Uh huh. This is the 11 16 we're just using. Took it out, let it cool for a while. We're going to switch to a half inch, and this is a centering bit. This is your center point. It goes down on the bottom of this, the back side. And as you go in to the material, it pushes that back out of the way. So it's hollow up in here, and it comes up like this so that you can cut your plug. This is what we need for the shock mounts. So we've got two shock mounts to do here in half inch and then we have I believe these are three eighths for the ABS and for the brake valve. Um, this side is all the 11 16 are already drilled. It went really really fast. You can see what we end up with here. This is what those annular cutters do and that's what that's what these are called. They're annular cutters. And they work on a flip the two flats. It's a quick release draw. What you have to do and make sure this is clean. There's any crap on that because it needs to slide in now that real easy. Let's put it in here and turn this collar. Turn the collar, put it in there, release the collar, and turn this until you fill it lock. I'm good to go. Now we're set up and ready to cut and get lined up for our two shock bolts. Sometimes a little Tip. That whole that piece you're, tap, you're cutting out doesn't come out. You gotta tap it. Just it should pop back out like that. But you want to be careful and not chip the, the cutter. So that one turned out okay. All right. So all my holes are drilled. Let's see what a nice job those annular cutters do. So that's an air brake valve here. This is the front leaf spring hanger. That's the ABS valve. These two are for the bump stop. That's a shock mount. And then this is the rear one, but you can't see it now. Do you want me to ratchet this? Huh? Do you want me to ratchet it? Ooh. And do what? Okay.
Do you want to set this up somewhere? Because I can't really. No, we'll just get this done. I can't. It's all back together. It's mounted anyways. All the cross members mounted, leaf spring hangers, all that stuff. Um, we got our measurement for the drive shaft. And we're going to take that in tomorrow. All right, we got to mark the frame now. So I'm going to come from the back of the cab. We're going to make this exactly 12 feet is what he wants. This way, we'll go do the other side the same way. See what I do is I cut it all except for about a quarter of an inch here. That way it holds it holds it the frame from binding on my blade. And then when I get to the top I'll cut, give it a kick, and we'll trim that off. And I'll do the other side. Next we're going to do the air lines. This is the, uh, this is going to the air brakes. This is how the air brakes operate. This is an air relay, which means this is a line from the air supply tank. So it's a nice big heavy line that comes back to this valve and supplies air to this valve. So it's there all the time. And this is basically the signal air line that activates the brakes. And the purpose for this is, if you ran this big large air line from your foot valve, which is where, where this comes from, it would take a long time to get enough air past here down to this, to the T, to the brake chambers to make them work. You'd have a lag in time. So they do this so that this small amount controls a larger amount like an electrical relay. So now we're gonna cut these these are push to connect fitting so it's very important your line is very clean usually I'll take this and a little bit of PB blaster on a towel clean it off real good before we shove it in there because it seals on an o-ring so you need the outside to be very very clean um, so let's get this cleaned up and I'll show you how we do it all right these are meant for 
like rubber hose, but they work very well on this because you don't want to use side cuts because then it makes it squash and crush and then it's not oval. This cuts all the way around. So you just mark it about where you want it. Makes a fairly, fairly round cut. I'm going to go around the edge, make sure there's no no ridges because if there's a ridge it can cut the o-ring and you will have a wheel leak or an air leak I mean and you just push it in and push back pull back and you see it's in there and same thing on the small one on the signal I like to leave a little room so we have a little extra okay now the next one is the anti-compound valve here this one I'm gonna, I'm gonna go over there. Hold on. Always rub my hands over top of the lines because if you can feel anything on there, that's enough that could damage your O-ring. This one's going to go down like this. So we'll cut in about that area there. We have to recut that one. Yeah, hold it on. That's it. Airlines are done. Check this out. Can't take the orange one out because it's underneath the tire. Okay. Oh. Now next is this wiring. Let's see what this wiring is. This long it has this OE connector on it. We're not going to cut that. We'll take this, we'll bring it back up this way. Uh, as far we need to go. sure our route is the way we want it. Make sure I got it the right way. There's a notch right there. Okay. I don't think I have that out far enough. Yeah, I do. This can be a little bit of a pickle here, but take your time. Just wiggle it back and forth and move that in. You see it's going in real slow. You know, a lot of like dirt and grit in there, huh? Yeah. There it's done. Now this needs zip tied right here because wiring that can't move don't chafe, right? So we'll uh, we'll zip tie it to these air lines here. You got to be careful on old stuff like this. It's already been like this. Probably the best thing to do is just leave it like that because if you go to straighten out, it's an old wire. You could break it. So we'll leave that. And start zip tying this stuff together. I got it all zip tied in. I'm not stingy with zip ties. I don't want it moving. Like I said, it's less chance of a chafe. Um, I don't cut zip ties. I don't use diagonals or side cuts. Um, this is what I do with zip ties. Clamp them on, spin them around until they come off, and then there's no sharp spots. So if you're underneath here working, You have to get up in here, you're not cutting yourself on all them zip ties. Doesn't take very much longer than cutting them. The ones I can't get to, if I can't get them twisted like this, I'll, I'll cut them, but usually I can find a way to get in there. It. We're done. We're waiting for the drive shaft. The drive shaft's been dropped off. Um, I pulled the front drive shaft out. 
taking the rear drive shaft, they're lengthening it by about, I think it ended up being six inches, I figured. And uh, once they lengthen it, uh, they'll put it together as one unit, put it on the machine and balance it as a, as a complete unit, both pieces of drive shaft together. Once we get that, we'll put it in and we're done. So we'll bring it back. Thought I'd show you my wife uh, clean the interior of this too. Um, she got it pretty clean. This was pretty filthy, so was the floor. But uh, this ought to be a good truck for them. This one got 270,000 on it. And uh, fires up pretty good. Clutch is good. Brakes are good. You know, a decent truck. Exhaust brake, cruise control. It's got uh, a tilt wheel. Not bad. Not bad at all. So. Okay, so here it is all finished up. Got my drive shaft. A little bit of a story with my drive shaft. Um, the one place I used to take it, uh, they had a change in people, management, whatever. I dropped my drive shaft off, and all they were going to do was take another drive shaft we had, cut it, and put the slip yoke from the other one because we needed it longer, and then balance it. Well, they wanted 500 and some bucks to do this. Um, so I didn't. I took it back from there. I took it to another place that a friend of mine uses. I took it to them, and they they took the two drive shafts. They cut it and put this slip yoke on the longer one. And uh, I went to go pick it up. I paid for it, and uh, went and had to have it balanced. And they're like, "We can't balance this." When they put this together at the first place, um, it was so far off not being straight and true they had to cut it back apart and re-weld it it was a shame a real shame but uh they got it all done i'm still within budget um they checked over everything it didn't need anything uh all the joints were good the carrier bearing was good which we thought it was anyways so they got it all done and uh i got a little primer on the frame here just so you know it doesn't rust on the guy before he gets to it but also, you'll see here, they put a paint line here so that you know where it's supposed to go when you balance it and put it together. Because when you balance these drive shafts, they have to be balanced as a complete unit, the whole entire shaft as one piece. That's how they balance it. So it's in, it works, it's good, it drives good. Um, the guy that's taking the truck has, he, he, he asked me for the best deal with the worst tires I had, and that's what I got. He has brand new tires at home, and he didn't want to. He wanted to save some money by not not taking our good tires. So uh, we put on the economy tires. He's going to trailer the, the truck home and do what he's going to do, which is a 12-foot flatbed. So uh, next, we're going to get on. I don't know one of these other ones. I got a few more down at the shop too. Uh, we're going to shorten up another one. One of these is going to end up being my dump truck one of these days. But uh, we have quite a few more to go. So there it is, guys. There's the complete moving the axle forward 100% start to finish. So if you like what we're doing, give us that thumbs up. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. Leave your comments down below, and we'll catch you on the next one.